All right, welcome back. Armored vehicles from Europe and the United States heading to Ukraine as Russia continues its effort to freeze the Ukrainian people and their government into submission this winter, attacking innocent people in Ukraine, also attacking power plants. Last week, the U.S. agreed to send 50 Bradley infantry fighting vehicles to Ukraine. Ukrainian officials are now asking for Abrams tanks, which have heavier armor and larger machine guns as well. Here's a look at the eastern regions of Ukraine that are contested right now in the red and the areas occupied by Russia as well as the grouping uh, of Russian forces there. You can see all of it. Joining us now is Yuri Sack. He's the advisor to the Ukrainian Defense Secretary. And Yuri, uh, it's good to have you uh, here in New York and on the show. Thank you for coming on. Uh, give us an idea of what the Russians have done to your country and to your people into the power grid. Well, what they were trying to do, they yeah. were trying to break our will. Uh, because what they have not expected was that the Ukrainian people will stand up for our rights, will stand up for our right to be a free nation, to live independently and decide our own future. And this is why, you know, today it's actually the 323rd day of this large-scale invasion of our country. And we're still standing and we are winning and we will ultimately win. But of course, the damage that has been done to our country is tremendous. Yeah. Um, so that you understand, um, almost 10 million Ukrainians had to flee Ukraine and they are now living as refugees in foreign countries. The economic impact of this invasion, the damage that was done, amounts to roughly about 700 billion US dollars. Yeah. Now the country at the moment is experiencing throughout, and it's, it's, Ukraine is a large country, one of the largest when it comes to territory it's in Europe. Country, yeah. So um, every single region in Ukraine is currently experiencing power cuts, emergency power cuts, because the temperatures have dropped and the electricity consumption has gone up. Are they still attacking your power grid? Is that still happening? I know it was well, happening. We, we, we've had yeah. um, 11 massive missile strikes and every time they were targeting our electricity infrastructure. And of course, the Ukrainian government is doing everything we can and have to to restore these facilities as quickly as possible. Uh, but right now we are actually expecting another missile strike. You know, they're using missiles, uh, ballistic missiles. They're using yep. Iranian drones. We, we keep hearing about the, the, the Patriot missile system, which is, is something you guys really needed. It's going to be beneficial, but that's going to be a while before that's going to be something that's going to be trained here, I believe, in the United States. And so that's going to take some time. What, what do you guys need in the meantime? How do you guys how do you guys keep fighting without it? Well, look, we are at the stage in this war uh, where we need air defense systems, of course, and it's great that the Ukrainian servicemen will be trained now in the U.S. The U.S. has shown again the leadership internationally in terms of providing Ukraine with the weapon system that we require. But right now, the priority number one is tanks. Now, you mentioned your earlier report about the Bradleys. Uh, and of course, right now we need tanks, Abrams, Leopards from Europe. And yeah. I was going to say that, you know, the uh, news today was the Russians are so afraid of the assistance that we receive that they destroy the weapon system before they actually arrive in Ukraine because they've made an announcement today that they've already destroyed four Bradley vehicles and they've not even arrived there in Ukraine. So uh, this they're, is... They're very threatened by all of this, obviously. They, yeah. 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 Hey, let me ask you this. This week, a Biden-appointed naval secretary warned that in six months, uh, a weapon shortage due to supply chains might mean that the United States would no longer be able to arm Ukraine because it would mean we couldn't arm ourselves at the same time. There's, that's, you know, that's six months away. How concerned are you to hear that from a high-ranking U.S. official that was appointed by Joe Biden? Well, first of all, we understand that this is a war of such intensity that not just Ukraine and Russia are running out of ammunition, the world is running out of ammunition and weapon system. And yeah. it's because since the Second World War, the world has not seen a war of such intensity. So this is why we say that we always have to be concerned about the speed at which Ukraine receives the military assistance, because in six months' time, we could be talking about, you know, the end of this war if everything goes well. Right. So the sooner we receive tanks, the sooner we receive air defense systems, and hopefully in the future the F-16s, uh, you know, we won't have to be worried about that. But at the same time, we hope that the defense industries, you know, around the world, in America and Europe as well, is there, they is will there start a, producing more. Is there a chance that in six months that this, if, if, if you got what you needed, is there a chance that in six months this, this war does end? Because I think a lot of people are looking timeline. How long does this go on for? I mean, these, these long perpetual wars are just devastating in so many different ways. 
Well, look, uh, for us, like I said at the beginning, this is uh, the freedom war. This is the war for our common values. And I would like to actually take this opportunity yeah. to thank the American people and the American taxpayers for actually standing with Ukraine and for being with us since day one of this large-scale invasion. And, of course, as far as we are concerned, we will do everything we can and have to. And we have shown that we can beat the Russian enemy and we will win this war. So... You know, the only thing that is kind of the missing part of this jigsaw puzzle is the speed, the pace at which we are receiving the aid. So we are now requesting tanks. You know, we need... There are in Europe, say, over 2,000 tanks, and globally there are over 13,000 tanks. Now, we just need two to 300. So if we receive them fast... And that would get... The, that You could push them out of out That of would be Ukraine? a game-changer, yeah. of course, yes. Yeah. The same way the HIMARS systems were a game-changer. The same way now tanks can change the whole thing. Ukraine's military intelligence chief says Russia is going to mobilize 500,000 men. There may already have been 300,000 mobilized already. Could have been more. Uh, do you think that Russia is going to launch a much larger offensive here at some point? Well, Russia will never give up on their plan. Their plan is the genocidal war against our people. It's not about territories for them. It's not actually even about Ukraine for them. It's about the reinstatement of the Russian Soviet the Empire. Soviet Union. The Soviet yeah. Empire, which, uh, for example, in this country, people like Ronald Reagan were fighting against all their lives, you know, and Putin is now trying to reincarnate that Soviet Empire. So this is why it's so important for all of us to, you know, to, to, to make sure that we win. Yeah, yeah. Yuri Sack, yeah. thank you so much uh, for coming on. We do appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you.